it's my great pleasure to present uh, Professor Prabhupada Agarwal. And as far as I can see, the title of his talk, Extended Fractional Geometric Function and Applications. So it's our pleasure to have uh, this very famous researcher at our seminar. And thanks, Praveen, thanks, Professor Agarwal, for agreeing to join us with your lecture. And please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Alexi uh, and Professor Vladislav, to give me an opportunity to share my research by this uh, international bi-weekly online seminars on analysis differential equations and mathematical physics. It is uh, organized by the coordinator Alexi and Professor Vladislav Love within the activities of the Regional Mathematical Center of the Southern Federal University in collaboration with the Institute of Mathematics mechanics and computer science of the southern federal university and the author research group in operational theory and harmonic analysis i am also thankful to the tanya the scientific secretary to providing me all the kind of facility to to share my talk via this online platform so all the eminent researchers around the globe and dear friends as you say that uh, Professor Alexis is giving me brief about myself. Uh, I'm a basically uh, researcher in the field of the basic uh, pure mathematics. I have uh, completed my PhD in the field of the spatial functions and uh, fractional calculus. During my uh, PhD, I have found the significant importance of the spatial functions. I found that these functions are very, very important in application point of view. For example, when we are dealing with the solutions of the some differential equations, like uh, Basel's differential equation. So when we solve the Basel's differential equation, then we are not able to find the solutions in compact form. Then we are using the gamma function and giving us some specific values of the arbitrary constants. And then we, go, we easily found the solutions of the Bessel's differential equation. It showed as the importance of the uh, spatial functions. As uh, we know that the gamma function, beta function, trigonometry functions like uh, sine theta, cos theta, or many more family members of this family are very, very important nowadays in almost all the areas of the applied mathematics. In previous two years are not good for everyone in around the globe. So we all know everyone are facing the big problem with the COVID and pandemic. And during the pandemic, many mathematicians are developed these some scientific models to analysis the spreading of the COVID virus as well as to analysis the how to manage the resources during the pandemic time. So that time, again, spatial functions and fractional calculus play the vital role. My one of the colleagues and good friend from the uh, Portugal and Spain, they have a uh, Professor Niato, Professor uh, Ivan Aria, they have developed a very good uh, fractional models, mathematical models to analysis the spreading speed of the virus uh, for the health organizations. And then they, they are managing the, all the resources to save the human lives, as well as myself and uh, my uh, two colleagues from the Professor S.R. Rao from the you know, you know, uh, USA. We have uh, developed the one model, which is a uh, very, very appreciable by the health organization around the globe. So I have a showcase the importance of the uh, fractional calculus and spatial functions. Now uh, you can see that today's my title is extended fractional hypergeometry functions and applications. 
why i am using the name extended fractional hypergeometry function we can first understand what do you mean by the fractional operators and then why i am using the extended fractional hypergeometry function for that i can show you yeah this is the one of the well known paper is uh, you can see that it is a uh, published by the professor varjina kriyakova it is a one unified approach to fractional calculus image of spatial functions professor varjina kriyakova is a well known scientist from the bulgaria academy of science and she is the editor in chief of the one of the very very reputed journal in the field of the fractional calculus journal of fractional calculus and uh, 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 applications she is the editor in chief and she is clearly mentioned that in her survey paper evaluations of the images of spatial functions under operator of fractional calculus has become a hot topic with hundred of recently published papers these are growing daily and we are able to comment here only on few of them including also of them the latest of 2019 to 2020 just for the purpose of illustrating our unified approach many authors are producing a flood of results various operators of fractional order integration and differentiation and their generalization of different spatial and elementary functions these effect is naturally because there are great various varieties of spatial functions respectively of operators of classical and generalized fractional calculus and thus their com combinations amount a large number as example we mentioned only two such operators from thousands of result found by a google search most of the mentioned work use the same formal standard procedure furthermore is such results often the original and the images are spatial functions of different kinds of the images are not recognized as non spatial functions and thus are not easy to use in this survey they presented a unified approach to fulfill the mentioned task at once in a journal setting and in a, in a well visible form for the operators of generalized fractional calculus and for the generalized hypergeometry function such as right hypergeometry function p psi q then hypergeometry function p f q fox c s h function and major g functions thus incorporating wide classes of spatial function in this way a great part of results in the mentioned publications are well predicted and appear as very spatial cases of their results the proposed journal scheme is based on the few basic classical results by the batman projects and work by the rk levoli osler and trembley etc combined with ideas and developed for more than 30 years of authors research and reflected in the cited recent work the main idea is as follows from one side the operator considered by other authors are cases of generalized fractional calculus and so and shows to be m ties compositions of weighted riemann levoli that is adderley cober operator on the other side from each generalized hypergeometry functions we can reach from final number of applications of such operators one of the simple cases where the classical results are known for the example so you can see that in her paper professor kriya kuwa is clearly mentioned that there are many several generalization of the hypergeometry functions are available but those are directly related with the right hypergeometry function gauss hypergeometry functions and fox's h and major g functions are only acceptable so that means these four fun five functions are very very important now you can see that in my recently published paper in which i have used the fractional hypergeometry functions 
It is a my joint review paper, which is published in 2022 recently, in which uh, I have clearly mentioned that the fractional calculus of a spatial function has significant importance and application in various fields of science and engineering. We aim to find the fractional integrand and differential formulas of the extended hypergeometric type function by using the Merchev Saigo Maida operators. In this paper, we have mentioned that clearly the importance of the fractional calculus. Fractional calculus is nowadays one of the most rapidly growing subject of mathematical analysis, in spite of the fact that it is a nearly 300 year old. The gain, gains of mathematics, Leibniz and Euler's thought about the possibility to perform differentiation of non-integer order. The real birth of and far-reaching development of fractional calculus are due to the numerous efforts of mathematicians from the 19th century to the beginning of the 21st century. A current trend is contemporary fractional calculus operator is a generalization of fractional calculus operator. Due to the expansions of numerous and even unexpected recent applications of operators of the classical fractional calculus operator has become a very powerful tool stimulating the development of the, this field. Since then, many non-researchers and applied scientists have made valuable contributions in the modification of fractional calculus operators and their generalization. So you can see that in this review paper, I have clearly mentioned that there is a huge close connection between the spatial functions and fractional calculus. Because when we are dealing with the fractional calculus operators, they have the one of the integral form in which they have the kernel. In the kernel, if we are using the specific spatial function, then the behavior of the fractional operator is changed. And it is a very, very good results in come form of the application point of view. When we are dealing with the sum of the physical phenomena, those are not able to find the exact solutions. Then we discover the some kind of the differential equations. Sometimes in after the introducing the fractional calculus area, we are able to develop the some fractional differential equations. And to solve these kind of differential equations, we require the specific kind of the fractional operators. Those are having the kernel in the form of the spatial functions. That's why my title is connected with this all the research. So my title is directly related with the extended fractional hypergeometry function and applications. I hope now all the participants are understand why I am choosing this kind of title because Fractional hypergeometry function is the first time introduced by me and Professor Kriyakova in a, in a form of the survey papers and talks. Now, this is the outlines of the my talk, abstract, introduction and preliminaries, main results, applications, conclusion, acknowledgement and references. As we can see that the Euler's beta gamma function jointly we say that hypergeometry functions are of the important members of the family of spatial functions. I already uh, share with the, all the information about the spatial functions like uh, how many members they have. We, they have the huge big family in which including the hypergeometry functions, trigonometry functions, beta gamma functions, and many more functions. The Fox's H functions, G functions, all are the family members of the spatial functions. And they play a vital role in the whole theory of spatial functions. These hypergeometry functions, together with their extensions, have many applications in research fields, such as engineering, chemical, statistics, fractional calculus and physical problem. In this talk, our discuss have been focused on the extended Euler's beta function, which is developed by the using the 
two parametric metaclefer function as the kernel as i told you when we are dealing with the spatial function and fractional calculus jointly then we are using the spatial function in the kernel form and develop the fractional operator it will be increase the behavior of the fractional operators it will be increase the possibilities to solve the some unsolved uh, differential equations partial differential equations as well as fractional differential equations we discuss various basic properties and formulas of the extended euler's beta function such as integral representation transpose transformation formula and summation formulas my friends as you all knows when we are dealing with the some new kind of uh, functions or then some properties are very important like a integral representation transformation formula and summation formula so we have discussed these property at care we also introduce the logarithmic convexity and some important inequalities of these extended euler's beta function then by using this extended euler's beta function as kernel we have generalized hypergeometry function and study various properties of these extended hypergeometry function for application point of view we have also derived some relation between these extended euler's beta function and extended fractional derivative operators such as caputo fractional derivative operator and riemann lively fractional operators so my idea is that first we can identify the some kind of specific spatial function then we have studies its extension version with the application point of view then after that we study the sum of its application and properties after that we have a generalize its higher family members like hypergeometry functions and after that we can use these uh, spatial functions in the kernel of the fractional operators and then develop the extended fractional derivative operators uh, for the application point of view so all the ideas are based on the application why we generalize this is only the reason behind that we want to solve the some kind of unsolved problems with the help of our extended fractional derivative operators these are the keywords which are play the important role in our study euler's beta function gamma function hypergeometric function metaclefer function caputo fractional derivative operator and lival lival uh, riemann lively fractional derivative operator so uh, the study of the extension of the spatial function began in the early 90s 90 so it is a one of the research group well known research group by the uh, one of the uh, pakistani research group professor chaudhry and its uh, turkish uh, friend professor jubair they have first time extended the classical gamma function in 1994 for the first time to deal with the some kind of heat transform equations some kind of boundary uh, value problems with the help of the gamma function as defined in the following form which is given by the number 1 you can see that this is the gamma x1r it is represented by the 0 to infinity e t raised to power x1 1 e raised exponential function raised to power minus t minus r upon t dt where real part of x1 is greater than 0 and r is greater than 0 so they develop they use this uh, generalization of the gamma function first time but the, the reason behind that they want to solve the some kind of heat equations and boundary value problem in the sequence chaudhry and his research group extended the classical euler's beta function in 1997 in the following form you can see that after the generalization of the gamma function they have generalized the beta function in in the equation number 2 you can see that this is the 0 to 1 t raised to power x1 minus 1 1 minus t raised to power x2 minus 1 and exponential function raised to power minus r upon t 1 minus t dt so these are the generalization of the gamma function and beta function by the chaudhry's and group 
In the above extension, Chaudhary and Jubair have used an exponential function as kernel to extend the classical Euler's beta and gamma function in terms of integrals. You can see that very easily. Here is the kernel in which they are using the exponential function of the gamma. And on the same way, they have used the same approach to generalize their beta function by using the exponential function in the kernel. Then after a few years, many researchers have used many known spatial functions in order to generalize the classical Euler's beta function and gamma function. But as Professor Kiryakova mentioned in her survey paper, all spatial functions are not important. But some of the spatial functions are very, very important. So that's why they are using many spatial functions from the uh, application point of view. In 2011, my good friend professor uh, from Turkey, Professor Arjunelin uh, et al., have used the confluent hypergeometry function first time to generalize the classical Euler's beta function and gamma function. You can see that 1F1 is showcase the uh, confluent hypergeometry function. They have used the first time in the history of the development and the generalization of the extended uh, functions. And in 2018, Shahdab et al. have adopted a similar method used by the Chaudhary and Arjunilin to extend the classical Euler's beta function by using one parameter metaglyphor function ER1. Extensions of the beta function is justified not only by the fact that most of the properties of the beta function is carried over simply, but also by the fact that this function is related to other spatial function for particular values of the variable. This is the beauty of the, the generalization. You can understand my friends, when we are dealing with the, some kind of problem and we are not able to understand their property directly. For example, uh, most of the engineers, they are dealing over generalized operators. They are dealing with our differential equations. They are dealing with the mathematical tools, but they don't aware uh, about their properties. Then it is very important. We can put the some specific values and find the well-known basic spatial uh, function, any kind of function. Then it is easy to understand the behavior of the a particular differential equation without going deeply in the particular area. So it will be very helpful for the, especially for the uh, engineers, for the um, medical uh, doctors, uh, scientists, and another different field scientist, because they don't know more mathematics like uh, mathematician. So these, that's why the beta function is very, very important. Motivated by the above work, me and my research groups, we have extended the classical Euler's beta function by using the two parametric metaglyphor function, which is called the women's function. Friends, me and my research groups have seen the, all the development of the generalizations of the spatial functions and uh, fractional operators and their applications. We found that their applications to solve the various problems of the engineering as well as um, um, some mathematical models. So after that, we deeply understand the two parameter, two parameter metaglyphor function is also very important function. So the two parameter metaglyphor function is also known as the women's function, as I mentioned, and it is given by the equation number three. It is a ER1, R2, z equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity z raised to power n upon gamma k r1 plus r2. The beauty of the two parametric metaglyphor function is that it has a gamma function involved with the two parameters r1 r2. So that's why it is a become the more strong functions to deal with the two dimension equations or maybe more uh, uh, difficult differential equations, those are having the uh, some kind of uh, dimensions also. The extensions of the classical beta function after the deeply study of the women's function, we have uh, generalized the extended beta function. 
which is uh, given by the equation number 4 an extensions of the extended beta function with r is greater than 0 is defined by the equation number 4 is 0 to 1 t raised to power x1 minus 1 1 minus t raised to power x2 minus 1 and now we introduce in the kernel is a women's function with minus r t up one upon t into one minus t dt. So that's why the generalizations of the beta functions is uh, proposed by the uh, previous researchers. Are these all are the special cases of our generalized beta function which involve the uh, women's function, or may we call the two parametric Mittag-Leffler function? So my point is that our equation number 4 our generalized beta function is a special uh, is a generalized one and when we put the specific values of the parameter to manage the convergence condition all the generalizations of the beta functions are becomes the special cases of our generalized beta function so that means it is a more specialized more generalized function in application point of view for example in this remark i clearly mentioned that if we put the r1 r2 equal to 1 and r equal to 0 then we obtain the classical euler's beta function you can see by the uh, equation number 5 very easily when we put the r equal to 0 r1 r2 equal to 1 and we do the some kind of computation then easily we immediately got the uh, well known classical euler's beta function now we have studied the various properties of the classical uh, extended beta function this is the first theorem in this theorem we clearly mention that if r is greater than equal to 0 and minimum of real part of x1 x2 are greater than 0 real part of r1 is greater than 0 r2 is greater than 0 then extended beta function defined by equation number 4 satisfy the symmetric relation which is given by the equation 6 symmetric property is a very important property to balance the uh, uh, differential solutions of the any kind of differential equations so symmetric property is a very very important property and we have uh, easily uh, verify this property for our extended beta function you can see that we have uh, mentioned the proof of our theorem 1 from definition of four we have this is the uh, extended beta function by substituting t equal to 1 minus x in the above uh, equation and interchanging the cross bonding variable we obtain the following result in right hand side and then by definition of an extended of the extended beta function we obtained our desired result so it is a easy proof but it is a very important property for uh, managing the differential equations this is the another theorem in which we can mention that the extended beta function satisfy the functional relation which is given by the equation number 7 functional relations are also very very important uh, uh, relation or maybe property for the extended functions because when we are dealing with the some kind of inequalities we are dealing with the some kind of boundary uh, condition boundary problems or when we are uh, changing uh, of the transformations of the uh, operators then yes functional relations are play the important roles so we also uh, prove this uh, functional relation for our extended beta function uh, these are the proof we apply the definition of uh, extended beta function to right hand side of the equation number 7 and perform some manipulations with the terms then we obtained our desired result is given by the equation number 8 then on the same we are using the some kind of computation and we got this uh, uh, property in the theorem number 3 we have proved the malin transform on extended beta function friends when we are dealing with the any kind of function 
then it is a very very important to know the asymptotical relationship and asymptotical behavior of the particular function so mellin transform is a very important property of any new function so mellin transform of the extended beta function it is defined by the equation number 10 and when we are going for the uh, zeros poles asymptotical behavior of the function with the help of this equation number 10 we easily found it so we can easily understand the convergence or divergence of the function uh i am uh, going to skip the proof of this theorem now this is the another uh, inequalities of the extended beta function inequalities are play the very important role in in dealing with the boundary value problems because we are dealing when we are dealing with the boundary value problems then yes inequalities are become a important uh, and strong behavior so when if we are able to know the inequalities uh, or uh, some kind of inequalities of the functions then we are easily uh, manage the boundary value problems so in this theorem assume that x y x1 y1 are non zero and non negative numbers such that x minus x1 product y minus y1 is greater than equal to zero and r1 belongs to zero to one and r2 is belongs to zero to one in the interval of zero to one then we have very easily proved this inequality extended beta function of x y1 extended beta function of x1 y is less than equal to uh, extended beta function of x y product of extended beta function of x1 y1 so this is a very important and beautiful result to understand the behavior of the uh, extended beta function in inequality form this is the corollary in which we are assuming that x y are greater than 0 and r1 and r2 belongs to 0 to 1 then extended beta function whole square is greater than equal to extended beta function of x x product is extended beta function of y y so it is another beautiful result and then in this theorem if we are mapping the x y to the extended beta function is logarithmically convex on the the reason uh, defined by the the r plus product is r plus where for all u is greater than equal to 0 with r1 and r2 belongs to 0 to 1 then we are getting very beautiful inequality result is given by the equation number 16 the extended beta function of the variable x1 plus x2 by 2 and y1 plus y2 by 2 whole square is less than equal to extended beta function of x1 y1 product extended beta function of x2 y2 extensions of the hypergeometry functions later on the jain et al introduce a new extensions of the gauss hypergeometry function and confluent hypergeometry function by using the extended beta function given in equation number 4 so friends in the second part of my talk first we have a generalize the extended beta function and then we are using the extended beta function in the generalization of the gauss hypergeometry function which is uh, deal with uh, my colleague uh, professor jain and his research group so this is the definition a new extensions of the gauss hypergeometry function which is a symbolical notation is defined by f of r r1 r2 p0 p1 p2 z is defined as follows in the equation 17 you can easily see that the right hand side becomes the summation of n equal to 0 to infinity the numerator is represent the extended beta function introduced by me and my team and the denominator is the classical beta function p not n z raised to power n factorial n and this is the extended gauss hypergeometry function it is a convergent for the given conditions 
Now we have also generalized the confluent hypergeometry function, and the definition is given by the equation number eighteen. Why we generalize the confluent hypergeometry function? As I told you earlier, the ordinary at all the first time the Turkish guy the first time in two thousand eleven, ten, and eleven they introduced the generalization of the uh, beta functions or the um, fractional operators with the confluent hypergeometry function. So confluent hypergeometry function is also very important family member in the family of the spatial functions. So we have also extended the confluent hypergeometry function by using the extended beta function, which is defined by the equation number four and given by the equation number eighteen at here. And the denominator is represent the extended beta function, and the denominator is represent the classical beta function. So now we have discussed the some of the properties of the extended hypergeometry function. The first theorem. Showcase that consider f of r r1 r2 and phi of r r1 r2 functions, then the following functional relations hold. As I told you, functional relations are very important relations for the any kind of new functions. So we have proved the functional relations for the extended hypergeometry function and confluent hypergeometry function. The equation number 19 is represented the uh, functional relation holds true for the extended Gauss type hypergeometry function, and which is a convergent for the conditions given below. On the same time, we have developed the summation relations, which is hold for the extended Gauss hypergeometry function. Which is given by the equation number twenty-one. Now we have proved the summation relations for the extended confluent type hypergeometry function, which is given by the equation number twenty-two. On the same time, this first functional relations, summation relations, are play the important role. Which I have showcased in my next slides. Now you can see that in this theorem, we showcase that uh, the f of r r1 r2 is the extended Gauss hypergeometry function. Then the following integral relation hold. This integral relation is involving the f of r r1 r2 equal to one upon beta function of p1 and p2 minus p1. And the integral is zero to one, t raised to power p one minus one, one minus t raised to power p two minus p one minus one, one minus z raised z t raised to power minus p zero, and this is the extended Mittagle Mittagleffer function, which we call the women's function in the kernel, and this integral is holds true for the extended Gauss hypergeometry function. For the following convergence condition, this is the integral relation which is hold and true for the extended confluent hypergeometry function, uh, which is involving the women's function and given by the equation number twenty-four. It is also holds true for the uh, extended confluent hypergeometry function. So now. We have discussed the Mellin transform for extended Gauss hypergeometry function, which is given by the equation number twenty-five. If we are operating the Mellin transform on the extended uh, Gauss hypergeometry function, then the right hand side becomes in terms of the gamma function, beta function, denominator is beta function. And Gauss hypergeometry function, product of Gauss hypergeometry function, and this relation is holds true for the given uh, convergence conditions. On the same time, we have proved the Mellin transform for the confluent hypergeometry function, and we operate the Mellin transform on the extended 
confluent hypergeometry function and the right hand side becomes in terms of the gamma function product of the classical beta function denominator is the classical beta function and product of the classical beta function the this is given by the equation number 26 and it is a convergent for the given boundary conditions then as i told you uh, the applications are very very important so now we are discussing my third part of my talk is the applications in terms of the fractional calculus if we are talking about the beginning of the fractional calculus then first we mention the contribution by the very uh, eminent researcher professor labnis sir labnis in 1967 sorry in 1697 labnis mentioned in his letter to j walls and j bernoulli about the possible approaches to fractional order differentiation in that sense that for non integer values of n the definition could be the following d raised to power n e raised to power mx upon dx n equal to m raised to power n e k power mx this is the proposed by the uh, professor lebdis in his letter to the j walls and j bernoulli in earlier 16 19, 1697 then after the uh, understand this development Bernoulli's, Lebanese and many more researchers they are working in this direction and then here I mentioned the one of the um, we can say that one of the milestone in the field of the development of the fractional calculus by the Eulers in 1730 he is a developing very very important composition formula you can see that this is the dn x raised to power m upon dxn it is a nth order differential equation when we solve it for the x key power m variable then we got the result in the right hand side then he is uh, using the very important property of the spatial function that is called the gamma function gamma m plus n we can represent by the m into m minus 1 and product up to the m minus n plus 1 upon or product of gamma m minus n plus 1 we all know uh, this uh, uh, very generalized property of the gamma function but in 1730 friends thought in 1730 Euler's use his mind and using the solution of the uh, nth order differential equation for the mth power variable in the terms of the gamma function and he is giving the very very important composition formula in my words it is the very important formula for all the fractional calculus persons. Nowadays, in the uh, 21st century, everyone, those are working in the field of the fractional calculus or dealing with the differential equations. This composition formula, or we can say that image formula, is very, very important, which is given by the Eulers in 1730. This is the formula in terms of the gamma function gamma m plus 1 upon gamma n minus n plus 1 into x raised to power n minus n very important formula Euler suggests to use this relationship also for the negative or non-integer rational values of n for example if we are taking the m equal to 1 and n equal to half then the left hand side becomes d raised to power half x and d uh, dx raised to d raised to dx raised to power half and the result becomes gamma of 4x upon pi is 2 upon under root pi x raised to power half we are using the some basic uh, properties and values of the gamma function and we got this fantastic result so this is the importance of the this composition formula then here i mentioned the sum of the well-known contributions by the well-known scientists if i am talking about the jbj fourier in 1820 to 1822 the first step to generalization of the notation of differentiation for arbitrary function done by the jbj fourier livoli was the first to point out the existence of the right hand side and left hand side differential and integrals through his three approaches here I uh, strongly mention that the melin barnes contour integral is a very important to, to 
uh, follow the the uh, the uh, mentioned code by the livoli because when we are dealing with the malin marnes contour integral when we have the loop in the uh, poles in the left hand side right hand side and we easily understand the behavior of the function so this is the approach is given by the livoli first time then we are talking about the great riemann and the initialized fractional calculus was both lateral in the later half of the 20th century liman notation is an follows the complementary functions we all knows the cauchy riemann equations are are the very important uh, contribution by the professor riemann in the complex analysis in the pure mathematics when we are dealing with the some different kind of domains fourier series fractional uh, fourier series integral transforms or maybe the residues then this approach is very very important and it this approach is also very important when we are dealing with the fractional calculus so professor cauchy professor riemann is proposed the cauchy formula for the nth derivative in complex variable is given by the f and z equal to factorial n upon j to pi contour f of tau upon tau minus z raised to power n plus 1 d tau it is a very important formula which we have used in the complex analysis and it is a very important uh, important for the all the scientists those are in future develop the fractional calculus since that time the fractional calculus has drawn the attention of many famous mathematicians such as eulers laplace fourier abel livoli riemann and laurent but it was not until 1884 that the theory of generalized operators achieved a level in its development suitable as a point of departure for the modern mathematics by then the theory had been extended to include operator d nu where nu could be rational or irrational positive or negative real or complex thus the name fractional calculus become somewhat of a misnomer a better description might be differentiation and integration to an arbitrary order yes yes it is a very true this quotation is very important because for the young researchers when they are dealing with the fractional calculus they little bit confused what do you mean by the fractional calculus so it is easy to understand that it is a differentiation or an integration to an arbitrary order it will be very easy to understand the the uh, senior school students those are want to come to the college and study the mathematics in the, their main course so it is a very easy to understand the fractional calculus with this quotation then here i mention the some of the important uh, development in the field of the fractional calculus in application point of view between the 19 to the 2022 it is a practically impossible to name all made important contribution in construction of the early stage of the building of fractional calculus new era in the development of this branch of science began 40 to 50 years ago due to the numerous applications of fractional type models and is continue up to now one can mention a large list of area of application as follows here i mention the some of the important contribution by the some well known scientist fractional operator appear at studying various problem of analysis of differential equation here i mentioned the one of the contribution by the professor k ditlim the analysis of differential equation of fractional order an application of oriented exposition using different differential operator of caputo type it is a lecture notes in mathematics published in 2004 then here i mentioned one of the great contributors for professor kilbas professor shrivastam professor trzolio Uh, i am really fortunate to have uh, some collaboration with the professor turzolio and professor chirvatova unfortunately uh, when we have uh, developed the one joint paper with professor kilbas unfortunately he died so their book is a very very well known book in the field of the fractional calculus as well as the, the uh, ma applied mathematics theory and application of fractional differential equation it is uh, published in by the elsevier in 2006 friends this is the highly cited uh, this is a one of the highly cited book in the field of the uh, applied mathematics i think it is a more than 11000 citation right now if i'm not wrong then here i mentioned the some of the well known contribution by the professor kriyakova 
in earlier 1994. She generalized fractional calculus and application. It is a very uh, classic paper to understand the behavior of the fractional calculus and their application. She's also developed the two psycho fractional integral operator using the spatial functions first time. She's using the 2F1 Gauss hypergeometry function in the kernels of the fractional operator and generalize the uh, fractional operator that is called the psycho fractional integral operator. Here I mentioned that some of the uh, well-known books, which is uh, Miller and Rose, an introduction to the fractional calculus and fractional differential equation. It is uh, published by the John Bailey and Sons in 1993. And here I also mentioned the, another very good book, Oldham and Spanner, the fractional calculus published by the academic press in 1974. Then and uh, as a being of application point of view, the Pudogoni is uh, published uh, one of the very good book, Fractional Differential Equation, published in Academic Press in 1999. Then, Sameko, Kilbas, and Marchiv, they are again using the same approach. I am inspired by them. They are using the spatial function in the kernel of the fractional operator and generalize the uh, uh, many sp uh, fractional operators and they develop the very, very big volume, including the many formulas, many definitions of the all kind of fractional operators up to the 1993. The name of the book is a fractional integral and derivatives theory and application published by the Gordon and Breach science publishers in 1993. Then here I mentioned the one of the remarkable contributor, Professor Machado. He is a die last year after his birthday celebration. He is my good friend. So Professor Machado, Professor Kriyakova, Professor Menardi, they have developed the series of the papers after the 2010. This is a, one of the remarkable papers, is the history of the fractional calculus, which is published in the Communication Nonlinear Science in 2011, in which you can see that in the small paper, the journey and development of the fractional calculus. And it is a very good for the researchers, those who are working in the field of the fractional calculus, or maybe they are working the pure mathematics. Now they are shifted in the applied mathematics. It is easy to understand the, uh, the, the, the development of the fractional calculus. From this platform, I mention it here very strongly. In nowadays, there is a no pure mathematics, no applied mathematics. It is a pure and applied mathematics. Because when we are dealing with the pure mathematics, we are looking for the applications. When we are dealing with the applied mathematics, we solve these some kind of applications. So that means nowadays, the mathematics is going in a different way. In my opinion, in, it is my personal opinion. It is a pure and applied mathematics. The researchers are doing on the both direction on the same time. This is the applications in the physics. We are recommended the Hilper book, the application of fractional calculus in physics, World Scientific, Singapore, 2000. In modeling control, I have uh, mentioned this book is by the four of the five of the authors, fractional order system modeling and control application published by the world scientific singapore then nano and cosmic physics here i mentioned the uchkini the book very well-known book published in 2013 by springer and many more development in the field of the fractional calculus so i mentioned the small introduction and development of the fractional calculus for the all the listener so they understand in their own uh, interest which book is suitable for you guys now, the theory of the fractal calculus has successfully been utilized to describe the fractal problems, real life problems in engineering mathematics. In 2021, me and my research group introduced a new extension of classical Riemann Lewis fractal derivative operator by the application of the extended beta function defined in the equation number four and also established some good result for their this extended Riemann Lewis fractal derivative operator. In my next slides, I'm going to quickly present these some applications. You can see that this is the generalization of the riemann lewis fractional operator. And you can see that in the kernel, we are using the extended beta function at here. You can see that in the equation number 27. This is the uh, extended Euler's uh, two parametric Metaglifer function. So we have used this women's function in the kernel of the riemann lewis and generalize the riemann lewis extended riemann lewis fractional operator. Then these are the uh, some composition formula. We have used uh, operate our extended uh, riemann lewis fractional operator on the z raised to power k, and we easily got the result in the terms of the 
uh, extended beta function and the classical gamma function. Here, uh, some of the theorems in which we have operated this, our operator on the two variables, z raised to power k minus 1, 1 minus z raised to power mi minus l, and then we do the some composition and we easily got the result in the uh, terms of the extended Gauss hypergeometry function, which is introduced by me and my team. On the same time, when we are operating the Malin transform on the extended uh, Riemann Livoli operator, <coughs> then we got the result in the right hand side terms. Uh, the right hand side term is the product of the extended gamma function and classical beta function. It is a product of this, and we operate this uh, Malin transform very easily with the some computation, but short of the time, I am not giving the uh, generalization proof of these theorems. Later in 10, we define a new extension of the classical Caputo fraction derivative operator by the application of the extended beta function. So this is the, I just giving the brief information. This is the extension of the uh, Caputo type fractional operator. You can see in the equation number 31. And I quickly giving the only taking the one of the more example. Uh, if we are operating the our Caputo fraction extended operator on the z to power k, then we got the composition formula in the product of the gamma function, product of the extended beta function, and denominator is also product of the gamma function and classical beta function. So we operate the Mellin transform also. So we conclude our investigation by remarking that the result presented in this presentation are easily converted by using the interesting known extensions of the beta function and other spatial functions such as technometric function, exponential function, beta function, and gamma function. It will increase the rate to find out the solution of differential equation symmetrically. The result presented here are important for the extensions of other spatial function in the theory of spatial functions and fractional calculus. My present uh, in investigation is sponsored by the National Board of Higher Mathematics pro uh, project for their necessary, and I am very thankful to for their necessary support. These are my references. You can see that this is the references. This is the reference section two. This is another reference section. These are the more references. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Professor uh, Praveran Agarwal, for very nice presentation. You have given us not only a research presentation, but also his very, very useful historical remarks and very useful literature remarks on how to enter in this very joyful subject of investigation. So we have time for questions, please. If you have questions, you can ask. You can raise your hands or you can just go ahead and ask. Yes, I see. Yeah, I would like to ask the question. Uh, you consider generalization of uh, special of beta function and uh, by adding additional kernel like meta function. Yes. Uh, but if you consider also in the integral kernel like exponential function, which is particular case of meta uh, probably you can uh, get some more interesting inequalities and results. Could you tell about that? Did you try to consider just exponential multiplier in integral in the definition? Uh, thank you very much for your nice question. Uh, in the beginning of my talk, I already mentioned that and uh, uh, I have shared the survey paper of the Professor Kriyakova. When we are developing the some extensions of our spatial functions or the generalization of the fractional operators, then the, the point is very clear in our mind. We are going to find out the the solve the sum and solve problems. So my agenda is that in these days, the geometrical interpretation of the fractional calculus operators are not clearly mentioned by any researcher. So why I am generalizing? Because I am choosing the uh, women's function and women's function having the uh, all kind of properties like uh, uh, force, residues, and 
we are very easily understand the zeros of the metaglyphor function women's functions or we call the two parametric metaglyphor function so that's why i am using this function to generalization of the beta function and in these days me and my team are trying to very hardly to find out the some geometrical meaning of the fractional operator so this is my approach to deal and study this uh, generalization okay thank you thank you okay more questions please maybe i have small wondering uh, when you generalize your operators as a particular case you have classical operators inside right yes 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 so you have classical cases inside of your particular cases yes. then classical operators connected with some real problems some real equations of mathematical physics etc yes do you have yes. any examples of extension of, of uh, classical equations to your case maybe uh if you are talking about the particularly my my uh, uh generalization so we yes we have uh, deal with the uh, some kind of uh, heat transform equations we have uh, mm -hmm. developed uh, some papers on this direction as well as we have uh, generalized the sir models for the dealing with the pandemic uh, uh, situations with the help of our generalized model and it is uh, published by the alexander journal by of the engineering so yes we have the application so th this 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 new details i mean this generalization have some kind of physical meaning right so these parameters new parameters they have some physical meaning right uh, uh, right now i am exactly not sure as i uh, i already mentioned that because the physical meaning is a little bit problem right now not only my mm -hmm. generalization it is a problem with the, all the fractional operators because most of the time we are not able to find the geometrical meaning so my task with to find out the some geometrical meaning of this kind of generalization as well as classical one because the geometrical okay. meaning is the problem with the fractional operator yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite a difficult problem right you right yes, yes, so yes. Um, maybe more questions um uh, when people study uh, equations uh, of fractional type operators of fractional type at the same time people usually study functions function spaces of fractional smoothness mm -hmm. do you have new new function spaces related to your operators uh right now no but uh, one of my team members my postdoc he is working in this direction and i hope in the uh, few months we can able to share some of the new work in this direction right or not okay okay great so please one more question if you want yes yeah go ahead I, uh, one more question if you allow uh you can see the melon transform yeah uh, melon transform is uh good for example when we people consider investigate fractional basic equations mm -hmm. uh, with multipliers uh, x to alpha in front of the alpha's derivatives mm -hmm. so why you consider the name real melon transform for your case you didn't mention any differential equations maybe there is uh, any relation already with uh, uh, some equations i expect no but just in case i ask maybe you know something yeah perfectly your question is very well well question and uh, thank you for your nice question professor prevel uh, we have uh, discussing the melin barnes because as i told you ki my agenda is to find the some physical phenomena or some geometrical properties of the fractional operator for that point of view it is a very important to understand the uh, behavior and zeros uh, zeros of the particular function or operator that's why i consider the melin barnes yes it is possible we can find out the another kind of uh, the differential equations also it is not a big issue yes we can we can okay thank you thank you thank you so maybe more questions No, I don't see. Excuse me. It was a question or what? Oh, maybe not. Okay, so actually we we had very nice presentation by Professor Agarwal, and it's very we were happy to see in your literature and your references very good friends of us, Professor Kiyakova, Professor Samko, 
late Professor Kilbas, a very good friend of us, he died 10 years, more than 10 years ago, unfortunately. Uh, but it was really, really enjoyable. It was really nice to have your presentation. Uh, as I said, it was not only research presentation, which is, research results are really deep, but also very good historical and just overall background given to us. Well, thank you very much, Professor Agarwal, and we hope you will join us also in our workshops and conferences, seminars again. You're most welcome. And if there are no more questions, then I would like to thank to everyone to ask to, to thank Professor Agarwal for a very, very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. We enjoyed very much. Thank you very much, Professor Aleski and Professor Valdislav, and as well as uh, Scientific Secretary Tanya and all the my good friends and participants. And I hope soon uh, some of the remarkable uh, questions is asked by the Professor Aleski. So I hope in the coming time we can develop the, some kind of new spaces and share by this, maybe this platform, maybe another platform. So thank you very much and good night from the India. Thank you.